Welcome back to another lecture in PV solar systems. Today's lecture is going to cover standalone PV solar system. And during the lecture, we will show you how can we design an adequate standalone solar system while taking into consideration the cost of the entire project. Let's start. It is very important before we start this one for you to understand the first three lectures. Because like we spoke, like we said at the beginning of this series, it's like a chain. So this lecture had a lot of it's built on a lot of information that was given in lecture one, lecture two, and lecture three. So please, if there is any issue in this. You can take notes, go back, revise lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, and or it's up to you. We can bring the question to our interactive sessions. Now, during today's lecture, we are going to talk about standalone system. Before we go, the first step we introduce what's a standalone system. It's very important for us to understand. The house electric demand. How to calculate the maximum demand or how to calculate house electric demand profile is also very important. Energy storage design is very important because, as you will see, standalone solar system rely 100% on the solar system. Which require energy storage to ensure 24 7 support of the electric load requirements. Then we will go into PV system design. In this section, we're going to include how to choose your inverter, how to choose the panel sizing, the location and the layout, and then how to complete the connections. After we finish from all this, we will use energy management system. We introduce the energy management system. It's called EMS. We will show you how can you use the current technology to advance the performance of your standalone system to extend the life of your energy storage. We go into commissioning and then maintenance and finally we talk about financial aspect of the system. I hope that's a clear. Now let's let's start. What's standalone solar system? I want to recall this information from previous lectures. If you remember, the PV solar system on its own, PV solar system on its own, will start from sunrise to sunset. In summer, it could start at 5.36. In winter, maybe 7 o'clock. In summer, maybe stop about 6 p.m., 7 p.m., depending on your location. Maybe it will stop at 3 4 p.m. Let us bring the load, the house load portfolio. The house, depending on your location, if you're located in the Gulf country, for example, in the Middle East, Lebanon, or Jordan, for example, let's look at this area. Required power. If you have an air conditioner running overnight, for example, Dubai, required some sort of power. Lighting, for example, the fridge, another. So this area cannot be supported directly from the sun. Same for this area. This is very important. That your evening or early hours of the night cannot be supported by the PV solar system on its own. That's why photovoltaic with energy storage, it's important to ensure a support of 24 seven. 
So as we spoke in lecture number three, we will take this saved energy, share it with this area and this area to make sure that we have 24-7 electricity. Is that clear why energy storage, it's a very critical, very, very critical to our design. With that, the energy storage, I will have no power for the evening, early hours of the night, and for the rest of the night, all the way down to the next morning. This is the system. So the system for an off-grid contains solar panels, inverter, energy storage, and then you feed the house. For this inverter, you have two types. Either you will have a charger controller. You have a charger controller that comes from the PV to the battery. And then goes to your inverter. Goes to your inverter. This is your inverter and this is your AC output. So all this, it's an AC, it's a, sorry, it's a DC, 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 or this is two, or you will buy a hybrid inverter that have a charger controller embedded inside. The charger control roll to charge and discharge the battery. Go back to our lecture number three. This is all we discussed in lecture number three. That's why I said at the beginning, this lecture relies on the information captured in the previous three lectures. So let's start now with the house demand. It's very important for me, it's very important for me to understand, I'm designing a system to support a load. I need to understand what's this load. And not only what's this load, the sequence of operation. So first I need to obtain all the data required, then I need to determine the sequence of operation of this apparel. Then I complete the assessment. So this is the assessment required. This is the instantaneous power. This is the number of apparatus that will be running at the same time. So you choose, for example, in my house, for example, I'll be running the washing machine with my water pump. So therefore, I have the power of the washing machine plus the power of my water pump. For example, in my sequence of work, I must have the oven and the air condition on and the water pump at one moment. So I have to add the three of them. That's how I determine my instantaneous power. So, number one, I create a list of all my apparatuses, all my electric appliances. Next, each one of them, I will have a rating column. So now, I'll give you an example. 2.2 kilowatt oven, 1.8 kilowatt hover, air condition, water pump. Now, the air condition oven and the water pump can run at the same time. So now, that's what I do. So now, I need my system to provide me 4.7 kilowatt. 4.7 kilowatt. As, remember, this is a kilowatt. When I come to KVA, I have to include the power factor. So, I need a system to be able to provide me with 4.7 kilowatt to support the desired load. So, now, by doing this, I establish my, instant, my minimum instantaneous power of my inverter that's required to support my house. So, that's number one. That's the first step. The second step I need to understand the load profile. I need, for the load profile, I need to understand when do I need 2 kilowatt, when do I need 3 kilowatt, when do I need 4 kilowatt or 4.7 as we saw in this example. 
I need to understand when do I need this power. That's why it's a very critical for me to understand the load profile. I can sketch the load profile by creating my own code or by using Excel, MATLAB software, any software that I feel comfortable with, and it's a very easy. It's all I'm, all I'm doing is I'm sketching the instantaneous power along the time of the day. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm sketching this. They have already calculated it along the day. When is it located? For example, at 12 o'clock, I have that much. At uh, 1 o'clock, I have that much. At this, I have that much. At that, I have that much. Now, this is an example of a loaded profile taken from an install system, just to give you an example. For example, for this house, they have let's say between 10, around 10 o'clock, they have a usage of 2.7 kilowatt. Then, there is no load except that maybe this is the fridge, the lighting, something, and then they get until maybe 2.30, all the way down to maybe 4 o'clock. They work again, and then in the evening. This is the load profile. So now if I need to design, I, understand, I need, I, I can see that during this time I have my peak, for this peak it's about 2.7. So I need now my inverter to be able to support this peak of the load. Also, from this one, I can, by the way, this is used by using a energy management monitoring system. This is another load profile, and this is in kilowatt hours. So this will give me every hour how much I'm consuming. Every hour how much I'm consuming throughout the day. So you can see I'm consuming basically starting from 9 o'clock, from 9 a.m., mainly all the way down to 4 p.m. This is where my biggest consumption. It's very important to understand this. So I can design the PV system to support it during sunny day, and then the energy storage that need to support the load outside the load outside sunlight period. So now, how do I start? Like I said to you, I put the daily hours of the day. I just gave you an example, so I can fit it in the screen between 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Oven and cooktop. How long will it run for? So how much I'm going to consume. So for the oven and cooktop, I'm running 0 0.6 kilowatt at 8 a.m. For one hour, so this. Then at 7 a.m. I have the light. At 8 a.m. I have the light. Then I have no more light because the sun is up. I go ahead and I look at the AC. I start turning the AC at full capacity. By the way, you can use diversity factor if you want. But in this case, we're doing the worst case scenario. That I want the AC to run 100%. This is the worst case scenario that I can have. So what will happen now? What will happen is, I add all this to kilowatt hours. So every hour, I'm consuming for the light 0 0.8 per hour, kilowatt per hour. Microwave 0 0.22 kilowatt per hour, so I keep adding this together. And then I have my profile every hour, I have the kilowatt hours throughout the day. And then I can sketch it from 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Now, if you create a software, you can be also more accurate by going maybe every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, it's up to you. To, to what detail you want your software to go to. This will give me now, so, so far, I got the instantaneous power, and then from the instantaneous power, I got the consumption profile. So, the kilowatt hours throughout the day, from 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m., all the way down to 24 hours a day. Let's look at this example. This example shows that 
this is my in what hours? Every hour, what do I consume? So this every hours, what do I consume? So for example, for five and six, this. For seven and eight, this. That's how much I consume. That's how much I consume. And then, how this will work, I will add, this is what will happen. Is, during this, this hours, I have the air conditioned light fridge. Here I have air conditioned light fridge. Maybe in the morning at 7 a.m. I have the kettle, toaster, TV and others. In here, that's what I have. So, that's what I'm doing actually. And what I do is, I let the sequence done by the software or the code that I did, or I can do it by manually. I can do it manually to determine where my load is. In order for me to design my standalone system, as we spoke before, the PV solar system, the entire PV solar system, including the energy storage, is the only and the only power that can support my house load. So, I have to approach. Approach number one, where I say, I ha I'm located in an area where I might, I might not have sun for numerous days. So therefore, I need to size my battery to support my house load for multiple days. See? And, or approach number two is I will only I will only design I will only design the energy storage for the house to be only after some normal sunlight hours. This approach number two assumes that there is sun every day. Every day you have normal sun hours. The number of days required the battery to support the house. I, if you remember, if you re, if you recall lecture number three, all I did is this is the PV. All I did now is I added the number of days. I need my energy, my battery stored, my energy stored inside the battery. Capable. This is the energy stored inside the battery, the one that we learned in lecture number three. I multiply it by the number of days required because every day I need that, many, that much storage. I multiply it by the number of days to make sure I have sufficient storage to run for one day, two days, three days, five days, whichever the design desired. Now, this is the maximum power capacity. This is the energy consumption, this is the number of days. Now, this approach required, requires, this approach requires large energy storage, which has dramatical increase in the system budget. You have to be very careful. When you want to go for large number of days, this is very important to note. Now, approach number two, the battery is designed for D is one. Remember that this equation, the D is one. Now, the battery is designed to support the house load for one day outside sunlight hours, which is none. I use now this equation. I go ahead now and I use this equation. What's this equation? If you can see, if you can notice, so now, as you can see, for the approach number two, I use day is one day. And then, I need to make sure that my size of the battery is equal to the entire house requirement minus the amount of the house supported, the amount of energy that the house is taken direct from the PV. And if you remember this, this is similar to what we've done in lecture number three. So this is the battery capacity now. This is your house daily energy consumption minus the house daily, daily energy consumption that's directly supported by the PV panels. And that's the depth of discharge and that's the efficiency of your inverter. So as you can see, this approach reduces the investment in the batteries. Reason why is I, change, I reduce the size of the battery by 
supporting part of the house directly from the sun. So there is two approaches. It's up to you. There's the two approaches. Either I go with approach one or approach two. If I don't, if I'm not worried too much about my budget, I go with approach number one to be on the safe side. If I go with approach number two, I will show you now how can you use energy management system and a priority list to advance your system. Now, let's have approach one example. Design the energy storage required to support the house for three days without sun energy. The house daily consumption is 116 kilowatt hour. DRD is 50%, efficiency is 90%. So all I do is I put my equations. So this equation is similar. That's what we did. By the way, this example is similar to lecture number three. And I multiply it by three. So I end up with 732.63 kilowatt hour required for my batteries. This is massive amount, especially if you're looking for residential project. So using, remember the 12 volt, 250 amp AGM batteries, the system required 244 batteries. If every battery costs 300 or 400 dollars, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money because I want my comfort to be 100%. Approach number two, I want to use exactly the same example. I have 116 kilowatt hours. However, now, the daily profile, the design required solar generation daily profile. So, in order for me, I need to understand this. So now I understand that one is this. I know that DOD is this one. I know the efficiency is this one. Now I need to get this. This value can only be obtained when I have the profile. This can only obtain when I have the profile. Let's look at the profile or the proposed profile for our example. Now, this is my solar energy. This is the solar energy. Now, during outside, this required is 24.381. This is 31.77. And the remaining 59. So, this 59 is this. That's your 59. What does this mean? 59.849 kilowatt hours will be supported directly from the solar system. No need for the batteries. The batteries will support 31.77 kilowatt hours plus 24.381 kilowatt hours. Which is now the system in here, this pH PV is equal to this one plus this one. Let's delete this one. So now P is 116, which is the entire blue is 116. Minus the one that directly from the sun. Minus the one directly from the sun. Yes, this PHP is this one. Is the total minus these two. You end up with 118.212 kilowatt hours. This required 40 AGM batteries. So, 40 AGM batteries against 244. This system reduced by 204 batteries. Cost of the battery, let's say, $300, $400, depending on the quality of it. So imagine the cost associated with this. Now, what's the consequences? The consequences of this system, if you have a very heavy weather, like a cloudy days, multiple the forecast shows, you cannot run all your appliances as normal. You have to prioritize and you have to work in a way to keep the critical load running. And we want to see, we will see this. This is what we just spoke. I wrote it down. 
after the PV system design section that actually utilize the energy management system to reduce the required battery size. So as you can see, we reduced it 204, 40 times 400. That's a 16,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. And I don't think a residential property will want to spend that much money, even this one. Still a lot of money, $16,000 or $12,000 on a battery, but still acceptable if you have a proper house and you want to spend uh, a retirement house, you can spend the $12,000 or $16,000. But this, you will be end up spending six more. So you end almost $100,000 on the energy storage. Now, DV system is the only power source. The PV daily output should be support the house consumption during sunlight period, support the design battery storage. Equation below is used. Now, what are you trying to say in this slide? I want to now design. Now I understand my house consumption and I understand my battery sizing. Because the PV is the only power source available, I need to make sure that the PV is equal to PV cable to support this, the batteries, and the house, to support the battery and the house consumption directly from the sun. Now, for this PV to be more conservative as well, you can multiply this, you can multiply this by the DOD. Why by the DOD? Because as we spoke in lecture number three, that the battery shouldn't drop below a certain value. So if you allow 50% of the battery discharge, that means you always have 50% of the battery capacity. It's up to you. This, if you want to add an extra PV panels, the PV panels are cheaper than the battery. Last for 20 years. 15, 20, 25 years. So that if you invest an extra 10 panels, it costs $1,500, 1500 and will last for 25 years. See the difference? That's why it is acceptable to increase the number of panels if you want, but the battery, increase the number of batteries, is going to cost you a lot of money. So, let's... Let's go ahead now and take an example. The battery size is 118 kilowatt. The DOD, see, the battery should always maintain certain charge. In this case, I always have 50% of my battery is remaining. So I always have 50% of this 118 kilowatt inside it. Just the first day, I make sure it's full, and then from that day onward, always have 50%. The house consumption, that required, as we saw, for example, it's 60 kilowatt hours. So the P of the PV is equal to, as we saw, we included now the DRD, which is you will end up with 119 kilowatt hour per day. Now, you need to make sure, is it summer day or a winter day or an autumn day? Of course, your load profile will change throughout the seasons. That's why it's very advisable to use a software where you can plug in the numbers and the software will do all this for you. But now, we are learning how to do it by hand. So in winter and summer, you create, if it's me, I create a one day, choose a one day a month, 12 months, so I create a 12 profile. It's very easy to create. Or you want one per season, it's up to you. One every two months, it's up to you. So this 119 kilowatt hour per day, as we did in lecture number two, I need to determine the sun hours. I need to determine the sun hours. Now, the, sun, the number of panels required. Then I need to understand how many sun hours do I have. Do I have four hours of sun or five hours of sun or six hours of sun? In my to determine the number of panels required for the system, I need to use... This is, is my calculated power of the PV. This is my single PV power that I chose. For example, I chose 250 watt panels, 360 watt panels, and this is the number of daily sunlight. 
and then I can determine the number of funnels required uh, to be joined. That's it. That's After determining the number of funnels required, I need to run a simulation. I strongly recommend to run a simulation software. Now, there is a SA, SAM, SAM, it's called SAM software. You can download it. You can start using it. Now, I need to start a new project. And then I have, I have an option for the detail PV or a PV what? When I go inside, I use, I have multiple options. I have two options. Either I obtained the solar data from my residential properties, from my uh, area that I'm designing, or I can log in to SAM to obtain the weather, weather data that the software has embedded inside. So what I do is I go to international data. It will take me somewhere. And then I choose, if I'm doing it for Dubai, I choose Dubai. And then I go to here and I choose, for example, the latest period. It will give you, and you, need, you can choose if you want calculated horizon, upload file. It's whichever you guys need. And then I will take this software, I'll take this. After I do the download of this, I download it using CSV or different format. I go ahead and I import it into import this data into my software and then I run my module I put the number of kilowatt DC required I put my efficiency I put my till degrees I put my what's my possible losses and then I run my module so after I add all this information I can choose whichever type I have I can put the losses shading if possible System cost, lifetime, financial parameters, electricity rate, electric load. I can embed all this information into here. The electricity load for this cable every hour for 365 days. You can input the file. And then also I can allow, enable the batteries and I can choose, see, the battery power. This is my instantaneous power guy I'm using. The battery capacity, am I using lithium ion, am I using AGM, lead acid. The number of panels for 190 kilowatt hour system per day using 250 watt Canadian solar panels, consider 5 hours full of sun, I need 95 panels. I need 95 panels. So what I've done now is I go ahead and I run same software output using this 95 bucks. In July 29, the daily output is 139 kilowatt hours. June 6, the daily output is 140. May 5th is 145. March 29 is 129 kilowatt hours. I need to make sure that for April throughout the year, by the way, same software provides you 365 days every hour output. There's an option to extract every hour out of the simulations. And as you can see, I have 119 kilowatt hour, all this suitable. So now I can complete my design. See, on the February 20, the daily output is 120 kilowatt. For my system, for my simulation, I used Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon weather file. Now, we spoke about the inverter. The inverter, should have the ability to accept. So I have now 95 panels. I need the inverter to be capable to take this 95 panels. All the power equates for 95 panels. I need the house maximum instantaneous power. I need the inverter capable to give me P instantaneous, the one that we calculated. If you remember the first example, 4.7 in this example. Could be 10 kilowatt, could be 20 kilowatt, could be 30 kilowatt, depending on your system has the ability to charge the battery. 
You need to make sure that your inverter, the charger controller inside the inverter, are capable to charge the battery within the allocated hours. I'll give you an example. If you have a water tank, 1,000 liters, and you have only five hours of water, for you to charge, to fully charge your tank, you need the rate of flow per hour is 1,000 divided by 50. Correct? So 20 liters per hour. Same for this. I need to be able, I have a battery, I need to charge, for example, 60 kilowatt hours. I have five hours. So every hour, I have to be able to provide, as a minimum, 12 kilowatt hours for five hours to make sure that the 60 kilowatt hours is sent to the batteries. Now, P instantaneous, as we spoke, this is P instantaneous for PV is the number of the PV times the number of the panel rated power. This is AC power, this is DC power. So I need to make sure that my inverter is capable of, of providing me with the AC power and DC power as we spoke. So maximum PV power is within the inverter capacity. It's very important. There is no need if you put less, I defeat my purpose. I need 95 panels. If I put 95 panels and this can only harvest 80, that means the next 15 panels might not use it. Inverter need to provide the maximum AC power that comes into heat instantaneous. And the charger controller is capable to support the battery, capable this to provide this power. To provide two elements, to provide this sufficient power and then to take back from it. The sufficient power. The DC power and charging power. I'm going to give you an example where to check for. For example, this is a solar charger and AC charger. I'm looking about the number standalone. I'm only interested in the solar charger. Maximum solar charger panel is look for six, and I have my hundred watt. I chose for you three thousand. Maximum solar charger current is 25 amps. This is a, for example, is a 12 volt system I need to check, 48 volt system. In this case, it's 60. In this case, it's 60. This is a 48 volt. This is a 48 volt battery system. This is a 12 volt. So every hour, every hour, this can give you, every hour, this can give you. 25 times 12. So for this system, if I chose this system, every hour I can get 25 times 12, which is equal to 300. What? Hour. So if I have five hours, this system can give me maximum of. 1.5 kilowatt hour. In this system, I have 48 times 60 per hour. So that's how I determine if my charger controller is capable to is capable to support and charge my battery within the allocated time. Maximum DC power. I need to make sure that. I have, like I said, 95 panels. I need to make sure that, as we spoke before, I have, see, maximum 5,000 or I have 2 MPPT, I have 2,500. Please refer to lecture number two. Please refer to lecture number two when I come to this element. Because if you, every time we want to go back and explain how to choose the MPPT, the number of MPPT, all the stuff, every every lecture needs to be about five, six hours. So I need to check that, for example, my system capable of taking 5,000 watt, my inverter. Is that suitable? Can I put my 95 panels? Yes or no? I need to check. For example, for this one, capable of taking 6,000 watt. Maximum panels. Maximum DC input voltage. I need to make sure also 
how do I put the 95 panels? All of them in series, all of them in parallel. That's where all this information that was covered in lecture number two used in here. Maximum DC input current. See? I go ahead and I read the data sheet. I hope that's a clear, and I hope if you have any doubt regarding how to read the MPPT numbers, how to read the maximum MPPT power, maximum open circuit voltage, and also I have the number, the maximum, the rated, see, the rated power operated DC voltage range. All this we captured in details in lecture number two. Now, let's have an example. I have 48 volt, 800 amp hour battery, okay? Using 3000 watt system with a below table current. How many hours the system required to support 50% of the battery mass? Number one is, I need to understand what's my battery capacity. The battery capacity is now, my battery capacity is 48 times 800 amp hour. This is a volt. I have to divide that by two. This is the total capacity. This is my total this is my uh, total capacity for my battery, which is 48 times 800. It's 38.4. This will give me 38.4 kilowatt hours. The system said 50% of the battery bank. That means I have a DOD. It's 50%. So that means the required, the required support of this one is equal to 38.4 kilowatt hours divided by... I need to divide it by 2, which is give me 19.2 kilowatt hours. So I need, I need the system, my charger controller, the 3000 watt charger controller, this is a 48 volt bank, to provide me every day of 19.2 kilowatt hours. This system in here, every day, capable of giving you maximum the system of this system in here because of the 60 is a solar it's capable of giving you 60 times 48 this all of it in kilowatt hours or watt hours that's 60 times 48 2.8 so this every hour came of 2.88 kilowatt hours. So this charger controller, if, if, if the sun power is available at a maximum capacity, maximum rated capacity, this is capable to inject into the battery 2.88 kilowatts. So if I go back and I see for this system, I have 19.2 divided by 2.88, I need 6.6 .6 hours. So the total number of hours, the system required, the system required 6.67 hours. This invert, this charger controller to support 19.2 kilowatt hours into the battery. So I need 6.67 hours. How do I, how did I, I can tap with the sensor? I take this, divide by that. So the total capacity is 19.2 kilowatt hours. Every hour I can feed 2.88. So therefore I need the total number of hours is, I need 19.2 divided by 2.88. I end up with just under seven hours of operation. So from what I know, it's going to be very critical. That's why I think in this system you need to use maybe an 8 amp, an 8 amp charger controller. I hope that's a clear. So it's very important, guys, to understand your daily battery energy requirements. And then I need to choose. So for this one, maybe I need to go and use an 8 amp. 
to make sure five hours of full sun will support my my battery system. So there is there is a eighty and there is different size of uh, charger control. Now, I go back to the connections. Guys, when I, when, I, when I go to the connections of the panels, I need to make sure, as we spoke in lecture number two, the voltage at the panel connected in series won't exceed the inverter maximum voltage. The MPPT, the MPP, the maximum power point voltage of the panel connected in series meet the inverter desired power, as we saw in a previous slide. The PV maximum power meet the inverter maximum DC power. The PV current meet the inverter maximum current. All this information, guys, we spoke, we spent one lecture or half a lecture about this point. So I'll give you an example. This is an ABB React 2 system. Has a 5 kilowatt AC, 6 kilowatt DC capability to MPP. Based on the design, 12 panel will be connected in series to each MPPD input at the ABB React system. If you remember, guys, we already done this. How we determine the number, all this information is being captured under lecture number uh, two. So is that clear? Now, this is how I do the connections. Energy management system. Why do I use an energy management system, especially when I have a standalone? Why? It will allow me to advance control, the control of energy consumption. Human comfort, cost reduction, extend system life, cheaper system. Cheaper system cost and for utility, ensure system availability and the quality is always maintained. Why it is important and how I can use it. How I can use it. I have a house. I have lightings, I can control the lights. If I control the light, that means I always turn off the light automatically when the lux inside my house is sufficient. So automatically now I'm reducing the consumption. I can use a sophisticated system where I can also dim the lights. I have the appliances. I can control the appliances, why? I only, this allow me to only operate the appliances that are under critical requirement. For example, into a very busy, into a very uh, cloudy day, there is no need to run any appliances that it's not critical for me. As for example, why do I need to do washing? Why do I need, for example, to run any other appliances that it's not critical? I reduce, for example, my hoovers. I reduce a lot of other stuff. For example, I push my washing, drying. I push them out, actually. If I don't, don't do the washing, I can do the drying. So I reduce my load. Load shifting will allow me, for example, in a, in a sunny day to shift the load. For example, all this washing, dishwashing, drying, water pump, all this will allow me to shift them to where the sun is, some period is. From early morning, late evening, early hours of night, shifting to midday. Automatically, I don't have to keep doing. How will this help me? This is what we spoke about. I have, for example, 500 watt light left on for 24 hours, consume 12 kilowatt hours. Wow. Consume 12 kilowatt hours. Wow. Or if an energy management system the turn on around four to six hours, you will consume three kilowatt hours. That's a huge reduction. For me. Six times five, that's a three kilowatt hours. From 12 to three, see? And the lights usually on when there's no sun. So this is a battery save. So, so far I saved nine kilowatt hour for the battery. <laughs> nine kilowatt hour of consumption. If the DRD is 50%, I saved 18 kilowatt hour of the battery size. Just by using, by the way, it's very cheap light control, very, very cheap. <clears throat> I 
appliances control. Take an example electric shuttles. Based on the light shuttles and also during cold and heat, I can set up the system, for example, to reduce my, my cooling consumptions by dropping down the shutters if the sun is very intensive, I close my shutters, I keep my, my air condition working at a lower capacity. This also will keep my house cooler outside the sun hours, which is also reflect positively on my batteries. <laughs> Load shifting. Now, like I said to you, by using this, <clears throat> it will allow me to automatically run the following appliances. Water pump, dishwasher, washing machine, uh, dryer, uh, other mis miscellaneous, for example, uh, uh, cooling or refrigerating. Um, I can run a lot of other items during where the sun period is there, which is reduce the power required for the battery outside the sun hours, which is reduce the size of my batteries and make my system more efficient and longer life. Also, if there is an electricity bill, this is just an example, if there is an electricity bill, not a standalone, it will also allow you to reduce the electricity bill for that. Reduce the investment. I want to give you an example. This is your <coughs> shift. So what I've done, this is your sun hours. So I have solar system between this and this. What I've done now is I shift to this. So instead of the battery supporting this load now, I have my energy, solar. I have the solar supporting this load directly. So there's no need to use a battery system. And as we saw the battery, in the, in a, if you go back to lecture three and lecture two, the battery are the most expensive and have the shortest life. Example of home automation is there is ABB iBus KNX. They have ABB free at home features. Look, by the way, free at home could be maybe five hundred euros, thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, depending if you want to what extent you want to go. In here, uh, heating, maybe you, you guys don't want to use heating for electricity. Maybe lighting, shutters if you have shutters. Maybe security, you don't need for security. You can have an energy management system where it will allow you to shift, has the ability to automatically or remotely run all your appliances from oven, cooktop, uh, air condition, everything. So these are an example that can be used and they are well established in the market. And the cost, if you are building a house, a retirement house, and a lot house up the mountain, or if you want to have it in the city, this, I'm telling you, it's thousand dollars, man. $2,000, let's say the most sophisticated part, but I don't want to go into a lot of deep analysis. I'm interested into load shifting, light control, heat control, and cooling control. That will, serve, that will give me a big boost when it comes to uh, send alone system. I'll give you an example, washing machine, dishwasher, dryer, water pump, charging. Example of load that can be managed, reduction in power, lighting, for example. Air, con air conditioning, heating and cooling. So all these appliances, come on, when I look at it like this, I say, hold on a second, what's left for me? What's left? Even cooktop, even cooktop and oven, if I have, if I want to heat up something, I can push it for what, for example, what I can do is, I can start the cooking midday and then continue afternoon so I can reduce the impact. But I'll leave this to the ladies, to the chef, man and woman, who is whoever, do the professional cooking to determine if it's appropriate to half cook now and half cook later. But this can be done easily. You can charge all your appliances that you have. You can run a water pump, dryer, dishwasher, washing machine. You can control the lighting, cooling, and heating using this system. Commissioning step, guys. Guys, the commissioning step, it's exactly similar. It's similar to what we've done. Similar to lecture two, guys. I have a solar system. I need to make sure that uh, I have all the voltages is correct, ensure all the required electric protection are installed, ensure the inverter is mounted as per the manufacturer manual, double check the cable connection sizing and coloring, make sure, I need to make sure that all these connectors are in off position during final checkout, test the DC terminal of the 
PV panels for induction to verify the expected voltage. Uh, check the polarity. So what I'm trying to say all this slide, when you want to install the panels, because maybe power electronics has to be installed as per the manufacturing man manufacturer recommendation. So have certain separation for breathing has to be mounted like this, for example, or like that, depending on your recommendations. And also, I need to make sure that when I have the DC, I need to test. I don't want to put positive or negative, negative or positive. I need to have the proper polarity. When I come to commissioning, I need to check the battery terminal. I need to make sure that, hold on a second, my terminal battery is 48, is my inverter 48, the hybrid inverter, the charger control. I don't want to give 96 volt to 48 volt. I don't want to give 36 to 48. It doesn't, doesn't work. That's why I need to do a proper commissioning. Log into the inverter using the interface application. If the inverter, some inverters has an interface, you need to log into it using the manual. There's a password. Log in and set up and do the setting. Make sure that charging and discharging. Remember lecture number three, charging and discharging setting meet the battery requirement. I don't want to overcharge and, over and undercharge your, my batteries. I don't want to burn it. I don't want to damage it. I want to keep it maintained well to extend its life and its performance. Charging and discharging setting protect and extend the life of the one source. First, connect the battery to the inverter. Turn on. Turn on the inverter. Make sure it's reading. Then I go ahead and I connect the PV. So now I have no load. First, I connect the battery, I turn around, I see, hey, okay, it's reading the battery voltage, all good. I turn the PV system, and now start charging, I check all the parameters, and then third, I turn on the connection between the inverter and the house to make sure everything is synchronous. I don't want to cause any damage to my house if I have any fault. That's why I follow this sequence. Maintenance. Uh, usually, Solar system has very minimal maintenance, except for cleaning in some area or heavy cleaning in some areas. However, I strongly recommend to check all of the connection. As we spoke in the past two lectures or three lectures, check the mechanical connection to the panel. Maybe after, after a while you install it, you have a loose, after all this wind, you have loose uh, screws or something. Check it. Uh, complete the mechanical check after three months of installation or after a windy. Uh, day for the first year. Check the panel for dust and soil residue. Perform cleaning as required. Check the electric connection to make loose. Ensure the temperature. Now, when I have the battery, if you remember, I need to make sure. I need to make sure that my batteries uh, are maintained. I don't want to exceed the temperature. I don't want to cause damage to it. Financial aspect. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, at the end of all the series, we are going to do full session, two and a half hours, really about advanced financial assessment, where we combine everything in an advanced way. I have usually the current market rate, depending, could be five kilowatt inverter, could be one thousand to three thousand dollars, depend. For a standalone system, because you don't have a grid connection, you don't need a sophisticated one. You need a very advanced one. 24 panels, for example, cost $2,500. Structure, about $500. Labor installation, 12 batteries of 250 hours of 12 volt. Investment budget, this is my total investment budget, $9,600. The system is installed in Lebanon. The yield generation is, as you can see, 10 megawatt hour. There is no maintenance cost. The cost per kilowatt hours is 40 cents. Why 40 cents? Because I have no grid. I have a diesel generator. By the way, this is very conservative. Usually way more than 40 cents. Right? Because you have to take into consideration the oil change of the generator. Remember, this system offers you 24-7. I don't want to say 365 days. I want to say 320 days. Full operations. Because I want to assume under heavy storm or something, I lost the 20 days a year, 30 days a year. When I come to diesel, if I am going to run the diesel generator 24 hours, I pay big money, a lot of dollars, for maintenance of the generator, oil of the generator. And the generator is not going to last for five years without changing, or 20 years like the panels. So every year, 
every year I have almost four thousand dollars to save or return. So I need two and a half years to return back. This on the condition if I design for one day, if I want to design for three days, the battery cost will push it very, very high. But like I said, there is no need. There is no need to design for more than one day. <clears throat> when it comes to the 20 days or 30 days, heavy rain, I only operate the critical items. So I only operate the light, TV, fridge, these items. For oven and cooktop, I'm pretty sure we can have a backup small stove on a uh, gas bottle, bottle, which is commonly used overseas and for this 20 days a year or 10 days a year. Actually, overseas, gas is cheaper in a lot of countries than electricity. So all their houses are uh, supported the cooking using gas. So I don't have to worry about it. So in reality, the heating, the heating usually in a very cold weather, they use timber, diesel, uh, and very rare for someone to rely on electricity. <coughs> Cooking, you can support it by gas during this small period. And lighting, when it comes only to lighting, TV, and a fridge, also the fridge consumption will drop dramatically when, when it comes to winter, when it comes to cold weather. <coughs> so as we discussed, this system required just over two years for return. This is a, we will do a group example during our interaction session and then we go through discussion. I hope that was clear. I know it's a long uh, lecture, but I hope you gained benefit from it. Please, please try to study this lecture before our next interaction session because the next lecture is going to be based on the contents of the first four lectures. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.